everybody, it's Hina, and today I am back. Yes, I am actually back. No need to applaud me, I am here with a new one. Just for you guys. It is a very, very deep talk that we are about to get into, guys. Before you ask, I'm sat on the floor. This is the only place I could get decent lighting, and I don't know where I left my tripod. So, in case you're wondering what this is behind me, <laughs> this is actually the bed. And, um... This is my favourite hoodie. So this video, guys, is a very important video to me. It is a very, I wouldn't say too emotional because life is just one of those things, you know. I am going to tell you something and I hope you guys understand what exactly it is that I am saying. My friend Neelam, she was going through loads and loads of depression. She felt like she was losing herself. She was really, really down all the time. It's like nothing mattered in the world to her. And she needed somebody to vent to and somebody to talk to. So obviously she met Mohammed. And Mohammed was always a very nice person to her. They would always talk on the phone. He would always cheer her up. They started catching feelings for each other. Neelam and Mohammed used to go out and spend time together, get to know each other. They had very, very, very similar interests. Um, and they seemed like like a really decent couple together. People really knew who Mohammed was and uh I'm not going into detail there, but you know. <laughs> so anyways, as time progressed, Neelam and Mohammed decided that it was time to, you know, take the one step further and speak to parents about what was going on in this situation. The parents were like, okay, if you both like each other, then you may as well, like, get engaged and then if you, like, whatever time it is down the line, not too soon, not too late, look into, like, getting married. Neelam and Mohammed got engaged. People invited, were well, like taking pictures, it was cute. In the meantime, Mohammed's parents kept pressurizing Neelam saying, If you really loved him, you get married straight away. Neelam kept saying, I am not ready, I want to think about saving money, putting money down for a house. Logical explanation. In the meantime, Mohammed, I'd say about two years, they knew each other. Mohammed kept saying, I'm gonna get a house, I'm gonna get a house. house. I'm gonna get a house. I'm getting a house. house. I'm gonna get a house. Get a house, 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 house. House. But nothing was happening. Nothing, nothing was happening. happening. <laughs> Muhammad's parents were sticking up for him saying, Yeah, he's doing it, but we're not telling you. It's a surprise. But in reality, he was just talk. Neelam thought, you know what, I gave him benefit of the doubt. Like, it could just be like, you know. Because Neelam was not a materialistic person, she thought. It doesn't matter. Money comes with time. Um, It's fine. Until she was buying designer stuff for Muhammad and Muhammad was claiming it was his and Muhammad was gaining like a pride that he was better than her despite the fact that Neelam was being the nicest person she could be <sighs> She was that nice to them that they started treating her like she was a low rubbish talking abusive to her on the phone Swearing to her on the phone saying that it's okay to beat women up Supporting domestic violence saying it doesn't matter if they get married he can put her in a place. If they're married, that's all right. Which, it is not okay for someone to say, and it's not okay for someone to do. As an Asian woman, you have rights to. You are not born in this world to be a servant, to be abused. You are not born to be someone who stays in the house all day and is controlled by someone. As a woman, you have the power to open your mouth and say no. So because Neelam, was this girl who was outspoken, she was confident, she used to have a laugh all the time, she was the nicest person she could be. Mohammed's mother didn't like it. She was like, you know, I don't like it because she's too outgoing. She has her own opinions. We're after someone who can look after all of us. We're after someone who um, will cook and clean for all of us. So what we'll do is we'll try and play my game to turn Neelam against her own parents. And in Neelam's world, Nah, that doesn't cut it, bro. Because the thing is, guys, your parents are your parents, fair enough. But if your parents are telling you to do something that you know is wrong, like supporting domestic violence, as a man, you should stand up to it and say, no, it's not okay. Like, if my mom's saying to me that I should beat my wife up, I should swear at my wife to be, it's not okay. Why are you taking your mother's side if she's saying that to you? Like, do you not love your partner enough to stand up for him? The thing, right, guys, is that the good people the good people always get rubbish end of the stick. The good people always end up used because you have a good heart and other people see it and they walk all over you. 
And the thing is, in this situation, Mohammed kept calling Neelam a gold digger, but yet Neelam was the one who was supporting everything and going out and buying Mohammed the designer things. And Mohammed, because of his pride that his parents had instilled in his brain, was calling Neelam the gold digger, but yet all she wanted was love and affection. She didn't even get that because of their family's mind games. And it got to the point where it became so much that Neelam was mentally drained and tired and couldn't sleep, couldn't eat. And to them, they didn't care because they were like, and that's why as a woman, you should never let someone walk all over you. You should ne never let someone treat you like that. Because if someone's going to treat you like that, and you still say, oh, okay, I still want to be with him. That's not going to end well. The whole reason behind this video, guys, is I wanted to tell you guys that if you're going through this, you are not alone. And it happens to a lot of women out there. And especially in our culture. And they think we're not going to talk about it. It's not something that we should talk about because it's taboo. If we talk about it, we're going to be shameful to our family and blah blah blah. You should talk about it because if you don't talk about it, these people are going to go around hurting every single like girl ever out there. If you don't talk about it, it's not going to be like raising awareness towards it and it's just going to continue happening. If you women watching this are going through domestic violence, domestic abuse, anything like that, it is your right to speak up. Even in Islam it says that women have rights so you shouldn't let someone take them rights away from you you are above that and you deserve so much more and it's not worth ending your life over and it's not worth getting depressed over because there is people out there who absolutely adore you like i said guys you stay strong and you speak to someone if you're going through something um and i will actually leave a link in the description box to a few charities uh specifically made to help asian women in crisis so please make sure you check that out. Even if you're a man and you're going through violence from the women's side, still speak up because you have a right to. Um, there's organizations out there that are made to listen and help you guys, to listen to what you are going through. Nobody out there is worth you ending your life over. And I mean that guys, I mean that with my heart. If you guys have anything to say to me, um, please leave it in the comment section below. Add me on my Instagram, on my Snapchat, I'm always posting on there. Thank you guys so much for watching, and as always, I will see you guys in my next one. Yeah! Okay, bye guys.